On July 20, 1969, NASA's Apollo 11 mission achieved one of the greatest feats in human history, landing humans on the moon. It was a moment that captured the world's attention, and it remains a source of fascination and inspiration to this day. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the Apollo 11 mission, from its origins to its impact on science and society. Welcome to our channel, Hidden Rees. The Apollo program was the culmination of a national effort to achieve a goal set by President John F. Kennedy in 1961. At the time, the United States was locked in a space race with the Soviet Union, and the idea of landing humans on the moon seemed like an impossible dream. But over the next eight years, NASA engineers and scientists worked tirelessly to make that dream a reality. On July 16, 1969, Apollo 11 launched from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, carrying astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. The mission was divided into three parts, the launch and journey to the moon, the landing on the moon's surface, and the return to Earth. The landing was perhaps the most challenging part of the mission. The lunar module, called the Eagle, had to separate from the main spacecraft and descend to the moon's surface. It was a tense moment for everyone involved. As the lunar module, called the Eagle, separated from the command module, Armstrong and Aldrin were in for the ride of their lives. They had been training for years for this moment, but nothing could truly prepare them for what they were about to experience. There were several crucial moments during the landing of the Apollo 11 lunar module that posed significant challenges for Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Firstly, the terrain on the moon's surface was far more rugged and treacherous than the Apollo team had anticipated. The Eagle had to navigate around large craters and boulders to avoid crashing into the moon. The landing site itself had to be selected very carefully to avoid steep slopes and other hazards. Secondly, the descent engine had to fire precisely to slow the Eagle's descent and ensure a safe landing. If the engine fired too early or too late, or if the fuel ran out too soon, the Eagle could crash into the moon's surface. Armstrong had to carefully monitor the engine's performance and make adjustments as necessary to keep the Eagle on course. Finally, the guidance computer on the Eagle had limited computing power and memory, which posed a significant challenge for Armstrong and Aldrin. The computer had to manage multiple tasks simultaneously, including monitoring the descent engine's performance, calculating the Eagle's trajectory, and displaying information to the crew. The computer also had to deal with unexpected errors and alarms during the descent, which required Armstrong to quickly diagnose and correct the problem. All of these challenges made the landing of the Eagle a nail-biting experience for everyone involved. But thanks to the skill and expertise of Armstrong and Aldrin, the Eagle landed safely on the moon's surface. On July 20, the Eagle touched down on the moon's surface. Armstrong and Aldrin became the first humans to walk on the moon while Collins orbited above in the command module. It was a moment of triumph and a source of pride for the United States. Armstrong said. The Eagle has landed. At same time. Aldrin said tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. We copy you down, Eagle. Listen, uh, tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. With those words, the Eagle had landed on the moon's surface, and Armstrong and Aldrin became the first humans to step onto another celestial body. On July 20, 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first human to set foot on the moon. As he stepped out of the Apollo 11 spacecraft and onto the lunar surface, he uttered the now famous phrase, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That's one small step for man. The moment was one of the most significant in human history, marking a milestone in space exploration and a victory for the United States in the Cold War space race. Armstrong, along with fellow astronaut Edwin, Buzz, Aldrin. Aldrin soon followed, and the two began to explore the lunar landscape. But the moonwalk was not without its challenges. One of the most iconic moments from the moonwalk was when Armstrong and Aldrin tried to plant the American flag. They struggled to get it into the hard lunar soil, and the flag ended up looking like it was waving in the breeze. But there's no wind on the moon, so what was going on? 
One of the most iconic images from the mission was the planting of the American flag on the moon's surface. It was a powerful symbol of the United States' technological and scientific achievement. The flagpole was designed with a horizontal bar that extended outward, so the flag would appear to be flying even in the absence of wind. The moonwalk lasted for several hours, and Armstrong and Aldrin collected rock samples, set up experiments, and took photographs. But as they explored the moon, they had to be careful not to get too far away from the eagle. Neil, this is Houston. We're copy. It's about time for you to start your EVA closeout activities. EVA stands for extravehicular activity, and it was time for Armstrong and Aldrin to return to the Eagle and begin the journey back to Earth. As the ascent stage took off from the moon's surface, Armstrong and Aldrin had to be careful not to collide with any rocks or debris. After spending a total of 21 hours on the moon, Armstrong and Aldrin returned to the Eagle and took off to rendezvous with Collins in the command module. The return journey was successful, and the astronauts splashed down in the Pacific Ocean on July 24, 1969. The Apollo 11 mission was a milestone in human history, and it had a profound impact on science, technology, and society. President Richard Nixon hailed the achievement in a speech to the nation. While Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin are undoubtedly the most famous heroes of the NASA moon landing, they were just two members of a large team of scientists, engineers, and support staff who made the mission possible. Here are some of the other real heroes of the NASA moon landing. Michael Collins, as the pilot of the command module, Collins played a critical role in the mission, orbiting the moon while Armstrong and Aldrin explored the surface. Margaret Hamilton, a software engineer at MIT, Hamilton wrote the code that guided the Apollo spacecraft's guidance and navigation system, helping to ensure a safe landing. Katherine Johnson, a mathematician at NASA, Johnson calculated the trajectories for the Apollo spacecraft and helped ensure the mission's success. Chris Kraft as the Director of Flight Operations, Kraft oversaw the mission from Mission Control and helped make critical decisions during the landing. These are just a few of the many individuals who played crucial roles in the NASA moon landing. Their hard work, dedication, and expertise helped make the historic mission a reality, and their contributions continue to inspire new generations of scientists and engineers. Know you have one question? Why no moon landing machines after Apollo 11? But that's not true. After the historic Apollo 11 moon landing mission in 1969, there were five more manned missions to the moon, all of which were part of the Apollo program. Here's a brief overview of each of the missions. Apollo 12, November 1969, the second manned mission to the Moon, Apollo 12 landed in the Oceanus Procellarum region of the Moon. The crew conducted two moonwalks and collected samples of rocks and soil. Apollo 13, April 1970, the mission was intended to land on the Moon, but an explosion in one of the spacecraft's oxygen tanks forced the crew to abort the mission and focus on getting back to Earth safely. The crew returned to Earth without landing on the Moon. Apollo 14, February 1971. The mission successfully landed in the Fra Mauro region of the Moon. The crew conducted two moonwalks and collected samples of rocks and soil. Apollo 15, July 1971. This mission marked the first use of the lunar roving vehicle, which allowed the crew to travel much farther from the landing site than previous missions. The crew conducted three moonwalks and collected a record amount of rock and soil samples. Apollo 16, April 1972. The mission landed in the Descartes Highlands region of the Moon. The crew conducted three moonwalks and collected samples of rocks and soil. Apollo 17, December 1972. The final manned mission to the Moon, Apollo 17 landed in the Taurus Litro region of the Moon. The crew conducted three moonwalks and collected the largest amount of rock and soil samples of any Apollo mission. After the Apollo program ended, NASA shifted its focus to other areas of space exploration, such as studying Mars, sending probes to explore the outer solar system, and building the International Space Station. There were several factors that contributed to the decision not to continue with manned moon landings, including cost. The Apollo program was expensive, and the U.S. government was facing budgetary pressures that made it difficult to justify continued funding for manned moon landings. 
Public interest, after the initial excitement of the moon landings wore off, public interest in the program began to wane. NASA faced pressure to focus on other areas of space exploration that might generate more public interest. Technological limitations. While the Apollo program was successful in landing humans on the moon, there were still significant technological challenges that had not been fully addressed, such as radiation exposure, long-term life support systems, and the need for advanced propulsion systems. However, NASA's achievements during the Apollo program continue to inspire new generations of scientists and engineers, and the legacy of the program lives on through ongoing space exploration efforts. However the mission of NASA named NASA's Artemis program. This is a new space exploration program that aims to land the first woman and the next man on the moon by 2024. The Artemis program plans to establish a sustainable human presence on the moon by the end of the decade and eventually send astronauts to Mars. Thank you for watching this video. Comment your opinion about this video. And do subscribe our channel for more interesting content. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for man.